So the book is a study of the place that the uh, Islamic State, ISIS, uh, occupies in the international politics and international history realm. Now, the study of this organization over the past uh, five, six years, since its emergence, in effect, since 2013, has been dominated by journalistic accounts, on the one hand, and policy research. Um, and the result is that we have had, in effect, a knowledge gap as far as social sciences are concerned. Uh, less conceptualization, less historicization. Um, that's one problem. The second problem is that the nature of that knowledge, the journalistic one and the policy-oriented one, has also tended to be quite sensationalist uh, and by nature, in effect, reactive, uh, event-driven, which deepens this uh, gap as such. Um, and thirdly, the dominant uh, literature has focused more on the religious aspect, um, the identity, um, and the regional exceptionalization, looking at the Middle East, looking at Islam in effect. Uh, and this has led also to having a different type of standard vis-a-vis -vis other earlier types of violence. Now against this background, uh, what the book tries to do is to present a historicized uh, conceptualization of the movement. Uh, it investigates its history, linking it quite uh, closely to the earlier movement, Al-Qaeda, um, and puts this in context as such. In doing that, um, there's a couple of arguments that are put forth. The first one is that ISIS is eminently hybrid. To understand it, we have, in effect, to work at different layers. Um, the um, first layer of that identity, and it's really a set of identities playing out over time again, is the uh, remnants of Al-Qaeda. So this upstream history, which we tend to set aside a little bit too casually, I think is very important. It's, it's really the DNA of the group. It's, it's a complex dynamic. It reacts to it, it rebels against it, it replaces it, but it's organically linked to it. So understanding that first pillar. The second argument to understanding it is that it's also ISIS eminently the result of post-2003, US invasion of Iraq, post-2011, civil war in, in Syria, degeneration of politics, insecurity, and so on. That, that is also something we have analyzed. We have, sort of have a certain routine approach to it. But in effect, it's very much during that period that the movement is born. It's a second generation AQ, Al-Qaeda, in effect, and moves forward. The third argument in the book, looking more forward, is that in the next uh, phase, we can envision a not so much ISIS 2.0 as is now often presented, but a future of, of ISIS which is much more linked to the violence in the Western metropolis. Domestically produced, um, not simply the second and third generation migrant populations, but in effect linked to a type of violence that is eminently from and within that metropolis. So against this spatialization and periodization, what the book does is offer a post-colonial, post-globalization, and very much post-modernity um, outlook on, on the, uh, the entity. I would say that above and beyond all of that, the, the book also presents an argument about, or rather invites, a reconsideration of international relations as they are currently taught. They have tended to be, in effect, very much Western-centric, that we know, but the story of ISIS upon examination is also part of a riverbed uh, of insecurities, non-Western insecurities, um, that have to be taken into account into these racialized IR for the past couple of decades. And that is the subject of the last chapter uh, in which I call for a form a pensamiento nuevo, as I call it, new thinking on terrorism, above and beyond ISIS itself. So all in all, a political history, um, an invitation to critique the existing historiography of the, the movement, um, and a contribution in that sense.